time uh, I'd like to call a meeting to order and uh, first of all we'll do the Pledge of Allegiance and then we'll have some more singing from you young folks so uh, you all will join us and you can leave the pledge if you would like. Ronnie Bill are you ready? You're going to leave. Okay, uh, we'll have the board commitments and then we're going to have some more singing. To improve our effectiveness, the Hardin County Schools board team commits to keep children first, listen, be prepared, be professional, demonstrate financial stewardship, represent the entire district and support district goals and support board decisions. You're a mean one, Mr. Grinch.
you all very much you know I've been here 13 years and I believe I've got to give you all the number one award. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all done a great job. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Thank you Miss Hammer. I may have your attention. Uh, Hardin County Schools was heavily impacted by Tragedy Monday morning of this week and uh, Central Hardin student JT Wigglesworth and a former bus driver Louise Pullen were both killed in an automobile accident. Ms. Pullen drove a bus for Hardin County Schools for 26 years. Uh, she trained other drivers and was a friend to all of our students. JT, he was a wonderful student that was enrolled in automotive pathway at uh, Early College and Career Center and certainly had a bright future in front of him. Uh, we'd like to send our sympathies to the families and the friends and uh, ask that uh, you please join me in a moment of silence in honor of Mrs. Pullen and JT. Thank you very much. Recognitions, Mr. John Wright, you take care of that for us? Sir, we have a couple of students to recognize, we have a student to recognize and um, a couple of staff members, and we have a good uh, staff as a, a good group always, as always, for the uh, Stronger Together Award. So, if you'll pass those resolutions, Mr. Chairman, we'll get started. So move. Second. Ah, oh, thank you. Have a motion and a second to pass the resolution. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carries. Thank you. Okay. First, we'd like to make a, a invite Miss Gina Jeffries to uh, mm -hmm. come up. You're representing Mr. Sweeney, right? Yeah. You forgot, didn't you? No, it was kind of last minute. But okay, that's right. So, Mr. We've tried to recognize Mr. Chad Sweeney for a couple of months, and he keeps getting sick. I don't know what's wrong with him. So, so Ms. Jeffries is going to be his stand-in tonight. But uh, Mr. Sweeney, uh, and Ms. Jeffries is a principal at Lincoln Trail, but Mr. Sweeney's the PE teacher at Lincoln Trail Elementary School. He recently earned the Kentucky Association for Health, Physical Education, Recreation, and Dance Elementary School Physical Education Teacher of the Year. Mr. Sweeney is a pioneer with the Project Fit America curriculum for our district and is a Project Fit America All-Star Teacher. His love for students and engagement strategies are absolutely remarkable. So thank you. Thank Mr. Sweeney for his work for us, Mrs. Jeffries. So, we will. Uh, uh, they have uh, something for you there. Mr. Sweeney, yeah. very deserving of the PE Teacher of the Year and being the chairperson of the Wellness Committee. You couldn't escape yes. the lovely nuns that went through the building this week. So <laughs> uh, I will accept this on his behalf, and he's very deserving. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Brent Thompson, come forward, please. <clears throat> Mr. Brent Thompson is a special education teacher and the head football coach at North Harden High School. Recently earned the Kentucky Football Coaches Association Class 6A Coach of the Year Award and uh, was also the District 2 Coach of the Year. He led the Trojans to a 13-1 record and an undefeated regular season. North Harden played in the state 6A semifinals, capping the most successful season in, schools his in the school's history. Coach Thompson and his staff are true father figures for the young men they serve. Their love and respect for their Trojans is beyond reproach, and those feelings are certainly ref reflected back uh, to them by their players. Congratulations on a great season, yeah. Coach. <laughs> now for our Stronger Together Award winners, uh, Ms. Melanie Ridley. Melanie, are you here? Melanie is an eighth grade student at North Middle School. She is a phenomenal student. Uh, Mr. Loma shared with us that her lowest grade this year has been a 99.7, so just three-tenths away from being perfect. 
North Middle School Principal Jeff Lohman describes her as a model student in and out of the classroom. She has scored distinguished in both reading and math on her state assessments as a sixth and a seventh grader. She was also a member of the basketball and volleyball teams at North Middle School as a sixth and seventh grader. This year, she is a member of the tremendous North Harden Marching Band and has earned all state band status. And we'll, uh, Ms. Johnson, if you could give her a medal for that. Uh, uh, We'll recognize her for that as well. That group finished among the best at the recent Bands of America competition in Indianapolis. Melanie is currently auditioning for the All-State Band, which she has uh, completed, uh, while also competing on the volleyball team. So Mr. Lohman says that North Middle School is honored to have Melanie as a student. So wow. thank you, Melanie. Appreciate it. Mr. Lohman and is very- And I would say that probably was dad back there standing up taking pictures. <laughs> May have been. And mom and dad, if you're here, please stand so we can recognize you for your hard work. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Uh, will the family and friends of Ms. Pam Walford come, uh, please come forward, please. Ms. Pam Walford, um, we are giving her the, er, she has earned the HCS Stronger Together Award and we're giving it to her posthumously. Ms. Walford has been a Hardin County, was a Hardin County Schools bus driver for 33 years. She passed away a little more than a month ago. The legacy that she lives, leaves for her family, fellow ACS transportation staff, and her students is certainly one to be cherished. She spent most of her tenure driving in the Rineville area, so it's fitting that, uh, that she's getting this award tonight. Her career was multi-generational. In her later years, she was transporting the children and grandchildren of her first students. Her love for her students and her career led her to drive a bus again even after her retirement. Even during her illness and rehabilitation, her strong desire to serve and her dedication to her students pushed her to return. She possessed a strong and humble spirit that blessed everyone she met, and that presence will be missed greatly throughout the district. This award is presented to the family and friends of Mrs. Wolford, a true Hardin County Schools treasure. Thank you all. For the Folks from Altec, come forward, please. These are our friends from Altec, and uh, we really got to know um, and, and really respect our friends from Altec. Not that we didn't already, but uh, they really helped us with our HCS or with our excuse me, the Altec Innovation Challenge. And Altec is a true partner of this district. Each time HCS contacts Altec to help with career fairs, industry tours, or a need for a classroom teacher, Altec team members are always eager to help our students. Recently, eight groups from all three HCS high schools participated in the Altec Innovation Challenge. The challenge brought science, technology, and engineering to life through a student-driven, project-based approach. The Innovation Challenge is guided by local teachers, Altec staff, and community volunteers. And, and these guys um, stayed with our teams. They worked with our teams at their high schools uh, till late at night. I know you, you kept in the winning team, right? And you were there till probably 8, 9 o'clock the night before the competition. So. Absolutely. So the Altec, this Altec Innovation Challenge that was held in, in Hardin County was the first one held outside of Birmingham, Alabama, which is the corporate home of Altec. Central Hardin High School students earned the top prize at this year's Altec Innovation Challenge. They presented their solution to food insecurity with plans to build and maintain 21 uh, raised garden beds. The beds will be used to grow various vegetables, which will benefit several nonprofits in our community. Cool. Altec presented the Central Hardin High School team with $10,000 to help the project become a reality. After the competition was complete, two of the judges, uh, Windstream Executive Bart Daly and ECTC President uh, Justin Pate, offered the students on the winning team a $1,000 scholarship if they continued their education at ECTC when they graduate high school. Wow. So uh, they were, they've been a big help to us and to our students. It was a great pleasure and, and we're on board for next year. So That's we're great. in. All right, thank you, thank you guys, appreciate you. Yeah. And my job is done, Mr. Chairman. Oh, God, oh yeah, I wanted some more good news like that, John. <laughs> We've got plenty of it, sir. <laughs> All right. Uh, focus on academics. Mr. Sutton, you got some good news for us? I do. I had planned on singing a solo tonight. Well, go ahead. <laughs> well, then the Ronnieville Rockets upstaged me there, so I'm just going to okay. pass that up. You think you've yeah. been put down tonight, huh? I will. Okay. The energized sitting. Uh, I, I always appreciate when I get a phone call from a principal saying I, I'm proud of one of the programs in our school. Can we, you know, can we promote that program, you know, at a, at a board meeting night? Tim Isaacs and I spoke about his JROTC program, the impact that's having on students in the school. And he said that's a result of the leadership 
from Mr. Roland Hahn as well. It's one of the top platoons in a five states region, and uh, they just want to come up and uh, talk to you tonight about what's making them so great. So I want to call Mr. Roland Hahn and thank Mr. Isaacs for uh, allowing us to uh, showcase his program here. So Mr. Hahn, come on up. Okay. Well, first of all, uh, Hardin County is very fortunate to have uh, Army ROTC. Uh, many counties throughout the state do not have it, and most want it. And uh, in 1993, uh, Mrs. Gray signed the contract. North Harden, Central Harden was given the ROTC programs, and then later John Harden received it. And um, I've been real fortunate uh, for 13 years, having been a West Harden graduate, to be able to come back and uh, teach at Central Harden. Um, tonight, I've got a couple of my uh, top cadets here uh, to talk about why they took Gerald TC. What, maybe their most, I don't know, maybe not your most memorable experience, but uh, one that you can share here in public. <laughs> and, then, uh, and then maybe about some of the plans they have after, after school. Cool. Okay. I've got Senior Jason Lasan. Hello. Uh, I'm the Battalion XO of the JRTC program at Central Harden. And what really wanted me into RTC is I had a sister that was in ROTC before me and I always went to their meets and it really motivated me to want to do it and become a better person and it gave me a lot of friends. And one of my memorable moments in ROTC that I can share publicly is uh, <laughs> probably our freshman year Dayton trip. It was just like we did really good that year and like we always do but it was just our first experience with the entire team really doing good together. So, and I plan to go to college or trade school after I graduate. Yeah. All right, good. We've got Hunter Richardson, a junior in our program. So I joined ROTC because not any of my family has been to anything like this, so I wanted to be the first. And it just kind of motivated me more to do better and better. And one of my most memorable moments in ROTC was probably my sophomore year of last year whenever I, first, when I went to Dayton. It was probably one of the best experiences I've ever had. It was very eye-opening and stuff, and just, so. What do you plan on doing after high school? What I plan on doing after high school is I plan on um, going straight to basic, uh, joining the Army. So I plan on doing that, and then I'm serving 20, 20 years or something, and then retiring. So I plan on doing Good. Good plan. Good plan. Very good. I want to brag a little bit on a little bit more that uh, both these gentlemen uh, are on our uh, drill team. Um, well, actually, I guess Jason, he's been on work three time defending seven for getting champions over North Harden. Uh, Hunter's got to experience that the last two years. Uh, Jason leads our exhibition team, the ones that do all the throwing the rifles. Hunter's also on that team. Um, they've both done Raiders, and Jason also does rifle team. Um, today, got his car got hit in the parking lot. That did not keep him from coming tonight. I think he had to crawl through his uh, passenger seat to, to get in tonight. So uh, we're, we're glad he was able to do that. But uh, they do a lot more than that. Our dating trip, we go up to, uh, to a competition up there. And, um, we've won it nine years in a row. And so we've, we're finally just going to give him the trophy back because <laughs> nobody goes to me except us, really. So and then, um, <laughs> they go, we'll go up to the Air Force Museum there in Dayton. I think that's where they had all the fun, was going around looking at all the planes. And uh, I think this year we're actually going to go to Chattanooga and try to start something new down there and go see some choo-choo trains or something like that. <laughs> but uh, it's been a real pleasure to, uh, to be here uh, at the program. And I've had some former classmates of my children come through. And I'm sure I'm getting ready to see some grandchildren here pretty soon. So. Like, but, uh, thanks for inviting us to be here tonight. Appreciate it. Okay, recognition of visitors. Uh, nobody signed in? All right, thank you. All right, we're down to uh, construction updates, and uh, JRA, uh, they met with us uh, at our noon meeting, and uh, everything is uh, progressing along. Uh, it looks like it might be slower than we would like, but after all, they're getting more work done than we think they're doing. So uh, it just takes a while for everything to come together, but hopefully uh, we'll start seeing some roof on. They told us in uh, February at uh, Lincoln Trail and uh, got more masons on the job, but 
It's just a process. Uh, we're trying to protect and keep floors a little better than some of our projects have been, so we're moving along. Christmas is going to slow him up a little this week, although he did say uh, he thought some people were going to work at least a half a day Christmas Eve, so <laughs> that's good. I tell you what, out there at the East Arden site, I believe they've moved the same mound of dirt about five times. I don't know <laughs> what they're doing. <laughs> they've moved dirt all over. I think place. they're starting to spread some topsoil on yeah. some of that. But it's really <laughs> beginning to come together. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I think they got it where they want it now. Yeah, maybe. Okay. We're down to uh, consideration of the consent agenda, and uh, it a uh, few items on there might be a little different. Uh, comprehensive and district uh, improvement uh, plans is for the 1920 school year. Uh, student services, we're approving the 2021 school calendar. That sounds way out there, don't it? Yeah, 2021 20, and uh, that was uh, the same as it was voted on by everyone I think uh, Brian Lewis said the majority of the group had favored this school calendar so that's uh, what we're going to go with and uh, we're proving the JROTC drill team to go to Chattanooga there, you go. <laughs> there we go and uh, Lakewood Elementary fifth grade class to Corbin, Frankfurt, and Lexington. They're going to take a little uh, Kentucky tour there. John Harden High School boys basketball team uh, to travel to tournament games by commercial carrier, whatever they might be. Central Harden softball team to travel to Fort Walton Beach, Florida in uh, March and April. It's probably spring break. Isn't spring it? break, I would say. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then the financial, we got the monthly financial reports, order of the treasurer. Uh, we have a, we're going to purchase five buses uh, from within our funds. We're not going to do the bonding project. Uh, we've got a change order number nine for Lincoln Trail, which we're getting some money back, so we'll take all those change orders we can get. That was some sound proofing, I think, behind the bleachers, and we figured out with the bleachers there we don't need any uh, product on those walls to for sound proofing. And then uh, human resources, certified personnel actions, and classified site-based council minutes, pack information, and then we're approving the minutes of the November meeting. Anything anyone wants to pull out or change or whatever, or discuss more? There's a lot in there, but Mr. Chairman, I I would make a motion to approve the consent agenda. I'll okay. second. A motion to second. Any other uh, concerns or questions or clarifications of it? We'd be glad to try to. Get them on here. If not, we'll vote on the motion. All in favor, second five saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. And we're down to action items. Election of a 2020 board chair. Someone needs that job. Yes, they do. And I'm going to nominate Charlie Wise. I think consistency is a really good thing to have at this time, and, and uh, you've been doing a good job. But we'll settle for Charlie. If you'll take it, Charlie. <laughs> yeah, we'll settle for Charlie. <laughs> okay. I will second that motion. Well, maybe I was, was waiting for that. I thought maybe it was going to die with a lack of a second thing. <laughs> well, we were considering things. <laughs> Any other nominations? If not, I guess we need to vote. And it sounds like this is a done deal to me. Yeah. <laughs> All in favor, right second five of saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. I will do my best to uh, serve another year. I 
appreciate y'all's confidence and uh, appreciate what you do. Uh, Absolutely. It's uh, it's really a you know y'all should have considered the extra pay that I get for <laughs> all this stuff. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, that being none, but I do I do enjoy it and and you know I'm somewhat retired and I enjoy trying to help things for the Hardin County Schools, I really do. We appreciate and you making yourself available. Kids yeah, like these tonight, uh, we see so many of those things. I try to attend as a lot of the functions, uh, mm -hmm. and you know, they, they're, they're out there, they're really working hard. Yes, they, they, they are. They, uh, sometimes we think they're not maybe the best students they could be, but they're putting in their best efforts. So we just gotta congratulate them and, and keep urging them to do better when you hear 99.7 is that what I heard and uh, yeah that's that right, Mr. That, that's that's amazing you know I heard some, something about that in the community today and I'm glad we do take time to acknowledge mm -hmm. that but it does take time and and the kids do appreciate us saying and recognizing that um, but it I don't know that we're actually even grasping the, the the straw because there's a lot there that we're not actually acknowledging there's so much going on so yeah much talent on yes there is we uh, we have a, we, you know we've got a a big district uh, a big area yeah and uh, there's a lot of things that we miss but we still appreciate what they're doing Absolutely. I mean, you know, all that effort and commitment okay election of a 2020 board vice chair I'm going to nominate Dawn. I think she's been doing a great job since I've been on them anyway. I've watched her. I'll if you'll accept that. that. Thank you. Motion in a second. That was quick. I believe you've been railroaded also. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't go anywhere, Trevor. All right. Well, I, I'm Not planning to. <clears throat> planning on. Uh, backing the old man up when uh, he's uh, not able to okay. attend or whatever appreciate yeah. it all in favor signify by saying aye aye, aye. aye. opposed motion carries <coughs> affirmation of a 2020 board secretary treasurer and uh, that is that has to be i move to affirm superintendent Teresa morgan as the board secretary and as the board treasurer Okay. Second. All in favor, saying five, saying aye. Aye. I move to <clears throat> reaffirm the Hardin County School Board Chair Charlie Wise as the chair and Superintendent Teresa Morgan as the secretary treasurer for the Hardin County School District Finance Corporation. Second. All in favor, saying five, saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, now we're down to E. I'll mark them off here as I go. Approval of the 2020 board meeting dates, times, and locations for regular meetings. Uh, we've been the third Thursday as long as I've been here. Used to be the second Monday. It was that probably for 30 years. Really? Really? Uh, I'm okay with what we've been doing uh, or anything else that you all might suggest. Any reason for Makes a little difference. Changing. I just schedule around it when I can. Yeah, it's like. Do you need a motion? Like an egg. No, I'm wondering if it's okay with you. I'm great. You're the newest person. I am so good with this. This is perfect. Friday would be bad. Tuesdays would be terrible. Yeah. Yes. Don't get into my sport activity too much on Thursdays, uh, unless it's a girls' basketball game and. Uh, Sometimes we can even make those. All right, uh, so we need to. We're not. Just, we don't. We're not changing it in July or anything, are we? Sometimes we change it in July. No, we will not have a noon meeting in July. Oh, okay. But that's that's the standard. But you all used to go to KASA or something and conflict with that. We're, we didn't hit a conflict on anything. No, they've on, moved that to the very last week of July now. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, if it does, we'll just have to uh, amend or vote around or whatever. So we'll. I move we approve the board meeting dates, times, and locations for I'll regular meetings. That. Okay. Any other discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. New business. Mm -hmm.
Okay, superintendent's report. So if you recall at the last uh, board meeting, we discussed uh, the um, going out and talking with folks and getting their input on a strategic plan from the community had over a thousand uh, voices contributing to this. And so we have been working through the strategic plan and want to just take you through this. Um, the three chiefs have been instrumental in this process and so um, we work together on this. So uh, I greatly appreciate the work they are doing. Under each one, the first one that we will talk about are our students. And just the overall, not that we're not all responsible for that, but uh, we sort of gave this column to Mr. Sutton, um, but we know everyone will work to support this. So our commitment is all students will learn in a safe and engaging environment and graduate transition ready, meaning they can go into the workforce, they could go to the military or uh, to college, and then once they uh, complete college, uh, go into a uh, full-time position at that point. So uh, the measurable goal, we need to make sure we know how are we making progress. So we have set uh, some goals here. And you'll notice increase the percent of students that perform on grade level in reading and math by the end of grade three, five, and eight. We have set a goal of at least 80% or better. Um, the second one, decrease the percent of behavior and discipline referrals at our schools. Increase percent of students college and or career ready. And then improve key assessment scores such as MAP, ACT, KPREP, Brigantz in kindergarten, kindergarten readiness. And increase the percent of students who are transition ready. If you'll go to the next one. Um, Increase the percent of students meeting the new graduation prerequisites in grade eight. Increase co-op and job shadowing opportunities to make senior year more meaningful. Student participation in extracurricular on campus or in the community for middle school and high school. This is something um, I'm not sure we're not our own worst enemy. We have so many different activities and programs for our students to be involved in that we do not have as many students participating in what we would generally consider extracurricular activities. But what we want to make sure is our students, um, we start taking note of the students who aren't involved in any type of activities and try to promote them to join these activities. Uh, increase the percent of scholarships attained. Measure where students go after uh, graduation and opportunities for mental health counseling. We discussed the need for this, and we are working with um, Cumberland Health to definitely improve this. So the strategies that we will use to improve this, uh, life ready through college or career, we want to implement one-to-one -one scheduling with parents at grades five going into middle school letting those parents know what the expectations are of middle school, that there is a possibility that we will rely more on your students to provide you with information uh, than the, what has uh, been really the responsibility of the teacher in the elementary schools. And then also um, when we meet with our eighth graders to include the parents, and that scheduling so they understand what their students are doing. And then we've added grade 11 and 12 because we want to meet with parents to start discussing is your child ready to graduate, what are their plans after high school, and then uh, before they complete their sen senior year to make sure they have a plan for moving forward. Uh, through conversations with seniors we have found that many of them think that something magical is going to happen when they graduate from high school and that magic's only going to happen if they are prepared and have taken the steps to make that happen. So uh, we will be working on that and involve the parents in that. Create well-informed personalized pathways for all students. Uh, implement a system to review progress on pathways. Analyze current career pathway to determine student success based on data and if pathways best meet employability and community needs. Uh, at EC3, we uh, are reviewing 
uh, all the pathways there. Each of our high schools are reviewing their pathways. It doesn't do us uh, good to offer a pathway that is not going to give them a living wage opportunity or to have a job that um, is not in need at the current time. So we are continually reviewing those. Then of course you have to look down at the elementary school foundational skills of reading, writing, and math. Uh, this year we have taken the first steps to implement a core phonics program at each elementary school and gated, gain adherence in writing and basic computation skills. Mr. Sutton, if you recall, had a young lady here who talked about the math facts and what we are doing. Um, and then also a consistency of a writing program without the district, throughout the district. What does, what does gain adherence mean? It means for the students to understand and be able to communicate in rice, writing and basic communication skills. So they will pick up the knowledge. Okay. And again, the important work that Mr. Sutton has been doing, and we have been doing a great job with this, is getting all of our schools on the same page. So we know that we have a lot of students who transition between each elementary school in Hardin County. Uh, two, well, four years ago, we had 694 kids who moved within the Hardin County School District K through eight, 694 students. And so we found that it is very, it is a necessity that we have common things happening at those schools so that when those students move, we can take all of that information and that uh, school that they're going to will pick up that information. Uh, implement a co-teaching for all at-risk students. When we looked at K prep <coughs> scores this year, we found that we had students who uh, had a I had an IEP not doing as well as their counterparts. So we have developed a co-teaching model. Uh, Mr. Sutton took a group to Boyle County to observe this, and uh, we have brought that back to Hardin County. What this allows us is, to do is to also uh, educate students who don't have an IEP but may need and have that extra assistance within the classroom. Uh, develop a plan to address digital literacy and citizenship and share best practice use. Um, you, those of you who are on social media will see sometimes we need our adults to be the mentors and set the right example in this, but we also want to take this on in the school to educate students about it. And then engage students in real life connection and career and technical education across the district. And then life skills and character education, implement comprehensive financial literacy curriculum. Uh, you, many of you saw that this past month, Mr. Mark Nelson made a very generous donation and that has allowed us to purchase books for each of our seniors in high school for next year so that they can have that uh, financial literacy. Grow uh, use of Sanford Harmony, uh, Mr. Um, Lawson and Mr. Bauer were instrumental in um, going and uh, implementing this free curriculum from Sanford Harmony and many of our elementary schools will tell you uh, how great that is and again that's consistent amongst all of our elementary schools and then ex go ahead is it reading or math no that is an emotional um, literacy program talking about how to treat others, how to take care of bullying situations um, in those areas. Expand work ethic certification curriculum to lower grades with culminating experiences at key junctures. We realize that we cannot just have our seniors in high school uh, to graduate with work ethic certification. So uh, we have been working on a curriculum for our elementary to where they would have a culminating activity at the fifth grade level to include grades, um, behavior, uh, community service, and then again in the eighth grade and then uh, continue with what we're doing in the high schools. Yes, they will actually have a scorecard that we will look at and determine based on the number of points that they earn. Uh, it will not be given to them simply because they show up. It will, uh, it's not a participation award. It is you actually earn. Uh, in the fifth grade, they will be writing 
um, a letter to their fifth grade teacher of why they deserve the work ethic certification, but there will be many other uh, items uh, involved in that as well. Uh, John, I'm sorry, if you would please go back. One of the things that the community has asked us about is what do we do with the students who don't earn work ethic certification? Do we just allow them uh, to pass on? While these students may not work earn work ethic certification, we find it very important that they at least learn the skills. So after the, on the third semester or fourth semester of school, if they have not earned work ethic certification, they will be attending sort of a remediation class, especially if you're a senior in high school, even though you won't, will not earn the work ethic, you will go through and complete a uh, online registration and application for a job so that we can at least get those skills before they leave high school. Now, the worker ethic certification program, that's still a voluntary program, right? It is a voluntary program, but every student who is a senior in high school has to take English 4, and they go through that process in English 4. The student does not actually have to push the button to submit their application but we strongly encourage that. But it is still voluntary, but we take them through the process because those skills are a necessity whether they earn the work ethic or not. All right. And then uh, social and emotional learning and mental health. We need to make sure every child has one person to rely on to ensure school success. And we uh, just need to realize it just takes one. Uh, even one parent at home, a grandparent, an aunt or uncle, a mentor, their teacher, an administrator, if one person can make sure every student in this district, all 15,000, have one person who is celebrating their success and setting goals with that student, we feel that will make a significant difference. Very important here, and Mr. Bauer has really been working on this one, school counselors will focus on social emotional needs of students and not administrative duties. So at the elementary schools, you will go in and see our elementary counselors getting into classrooms a minimum of once a month. And our middle school uh, counselors working with students uh, and then also at the high school working on those needs. If it is not a school counselor, um, as the next one said, we will provide services for our students who are most in need of assistance. So while we have school counselors, we also realize that some of these students need outside services um, as well as the school counselor. Are counselors still conducting those IEP hearings? Yes, they are, and that does take a, a lot of their time. However, we have really asked the principals and assistant principals to start taking on more of those meetings to free up the school counselors to make that happen. We actually have some schools where the counselor um, will only do one part, of, like speech IEP conferences rather than any others. And then educate staff to better meet the needs um, of social and emotional learning. Uh, how can we uh, we have trauma-informed care uh, that we are doing with our students, our, our staff, to better help the students who uh, may be having issues um, because of what they've witnessed or what they are a part of in their homes uh, and in society. Is that the program that I saw at NSBA? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Thank you for bringing that. Yeah. Yes. John. <laughs> Next is our uh, people, and as you can imagine, as Mr. Sutton was over the instruction part, uh, Mr. Bauer is over the people part in his department. So all employees will be engaged and valued. <coughs> Measurable goals. So the overall mean, and this is the employee engagement survey that all of our employees completed last year, and we asked them their thoughts of how we're doing within the school and then also at the district office. So we want that to increase from 4.12 to 4.22 and we will be taking that in the spring this year. Increase employee retention for certified and classified staff. Part of that is making sure they are well trained and valued. 
increase attendance of certified and classified employees. I will tell you one thing that we have really focused on this year is we need not to be our own worst enemy by taking the teachers out of the classroom for professional development, um, to conferences and things like that. Sometimes it is not possible. You have state organizations that have their meetings in the during the school day and we do send people but we want to make sure as Hardin County we're not having our teachers out of the classroom growth of new leaders uh, numbers in the principal cohort uh, mr. Bauer and mr. Lawson have been working on this uh, training program for new principals we selected 12 to be in this cohort and they have been in training and in January they will actually go and shadow a principal for a day um, at a different level than where they are actually at. So if they're at high school, uh, we're going to have great fun and send them to an elementary and middle school to a high school potentially or to an elementary as well. Increase the number of applicants for jobs. This is really important. It used to be when I was principal at Woodland Elementary, we would have 75 to 80 <coughs> applicants for each of our positions. I think Mr. Bauer will tell you if we get 25 applicants at this point, we are feeling quite successful. So we want to increase the number uh, and then also increase the number of minority uh, hires that we have. We advertise in different uh, places in Kentucky. Mr. Bauer and Mr. Lawson make an emphasis to go to different parts in the, of the state and to out of state to colleges that may allow us to hire a minority. Uh, candidates and then making sure our salary is uh, comparable to the other districts around us increase the amount of quality professional development opportunities we made a huge push in this last year for our teachers more of our schools are working together so instead of every school having their own individual professional development plans we are now uh, getting our high school science teachers together, social studies, all the different ones, and bringing in more quality uh, professional development. And then increase employee satisfaction. So after we did the professional development last year, we then did a survey. Tell us what you liked. Tell us what you didn't like. And the ones they did not like, we will not bring back and try to increase those each and every year. So... Um, staff recruitment hiring and engagement and these are the activities so uh, include incentives for shortage areas as well as continuing educational opportunities this is something many other districts are doing so if you need someone to teach chemistry they can go out to a factory and they can make a lot more than what they make in education uh, high school mathematics is another area so we at some point are going to have to think outside the box rather than that 30 years master's degree um, what can we do to get uh, these folks interested in teaching create implement and expand a grow your own program for administrators just like we're doing with the principals but also our uh, teaching programs at our high schools and then focusing on diversity i think if we can have teachers to tell students you would make a great teacher and it is a very rewarding career that would take us um, far employ a school-based recruiting plan hiring protocol uh, announcement of new hires if you've been on social media at all uh, with Twitter or Facebook you will see our new hires on there uh, I think many other districts took that idea and <laughs> ran with it as well but the parents their siblings really enjoy seeing those pictures out there so the more we can recognize them and start them off on the right foot uh, we believe that would be very important develop an onboarding protocol for expectations and services um, We've done a very good job with our news principals this year, but we also need to do that with all of our other programs as well, to include cafeteria managers, transition coaches. Uh, invest in leadership development for administrators on employee engagement strategies. Um, you cannot just wait until you're doing a review of the employee. We've talked about 30 second feedback, going back and sharing positive notes with them, letting them know on a daily basis, weekly basis, monthly basis that they are doing a great job and are appreciated. And once a year is too late, too Yes. 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 Yep. 
and then professional development. Focus on personalized professional development to better meet their instructional instruction. Develop a PD plan for classified employees and other unique certified positions. Uh, we need to realize that beyond the classroom, there are multiple people who contribute to the education of our students each and every day. Implement a district PD plan and calendar to address high need topics like co-teaching, trauma-informed care. Uh, we mentioned earlier uh, about how to deal with students who have social emotional needs as well. And then to enhance school PD quality district-wide. Uh, staff health and wellness. This is something um, I believe we overlook is with some of the issues that come into our classrooms, we really need to uh, appreciate and do more for our uh, faculty and staff, their health and wellness. So analyze health and wellness trends to identify major causes for employee absences. Um, develop comprehensive program to address key issues. We notice, you know, on Mondays and Fridays, we may have more absences. Why is that? And so we'll do some more uh, research with that. So then partners and uh, parents and community partners. Set a baseline. We will be taking a parent satisfaction survey when we get back the first full week of January. Uh, create alumni partnerships. We're already doing some of this. We just want to increase that. We have many uh, great folks who have graduated from Hardin County Schools and we want to invite them to come back and still share their services with us. Increase the volunteer pool by checking background checks for volunteering. Uh, increase the number of school community partnerships with uh, local organizations and donations. Uh, create baseline on increasing pride in the district as measured net, net promoter score. And again, we will gather this score uh, from our surveys. So while we don't have the baseline yet, we will have that. Increase in communication. Uh, this was an area that folks said we were doing a great job with, with the website, the Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and all of those. Uh, and I forgot to mention that uh, John Wright is the one on this pillar. Sorry about that, John. <laughs> Want to put your name up at the top. And then parent conference data as we do the one-to-one -one scheduling. How many parents are we having in? And this is what I shared with our middle school principals. We may not get every parent in for that one-to-one -one conference, but if we can't get that parent in that one time a year for that parent conference, that tells us the students we need to identify for mentors or someone within the school working. Key strategic actions. Implement system to identify and connect students to living wage jobs. Not just a job, but living wage. Serve as a recruiting ground for area businesses. Um, in need of our graduates develop and mark the product, meaning our graduates, we need to make sure we are selling uh, our students to the community by letting them know the, the skills they possess when they leave high school and the caliber of students that we have. And then parent education to support student learning. Give parents necessary tools to be more engaged in their students' learning. This happens a lot at uh, the preschool, kindergarten, and um, even toddler program that we have, we just need to help parents as they move through. Develop and implement a plan to better engage parents uh, and actually teach parenting skills as needed, and our family resource centers uh, assist us a lot with that. And then work with the court system to coordinate parent education for community service. Um, a lot of times the courts will ask parents to do community service and maybe if we work with the courts we can say instead of community service how about we do parenting classes in lieu of the community service and give us a chance to work with those adults and then processes and operations we wanted to make sure John Stith was not left out and so this is his area here and if you think about the processes and procedures, um, there's a lot of those with the child nutrition program, with our transportation department here at central office. So maintain the overall mean of the fall district services survey at a 4.45 or above on the fall survey. And then the top box, which is the folks saying they strongly agree 
to increase that from 58.75 to 60.75, which is a um, very high number for any group of people to say they strongly agree. Um, to get people to agree on many things is very difficult. Be fully staffed in key areas, classrooms, our buses, our cafeterias, our custodians. Um, numbers in principal induction program and satisfaction. Uh, key measures of fiscal accountability, bond rating, fund balance, revenue versus expense, just making sure that our district is sound financial um, situations. And then key measures of satisfaction with transportation and student nutrition. Uh, our goal, uh, increase work order timeliness. And then the number of policies documented. What we mean by this is, um, there are several people in this room who plan to retire in the next 10 years, believe it or not. Raise your hand if you're one of those. <laughs> so we really want uh, some of the processes and procedures to be written down, typed out, flow chart, so that uh, when one person retires, we do not lose the knowledge that goes out the door with that person. Uh, transportation efficiency, uh, <clears throat> looking at our bus routes, uh, can we combine any of those? What can we do as we have a decrease of bus drivers? Uh, how can we be more efficient? Uh, customer service training, making sure that everyone in the district knows how. I know John has trained uh, the folks at the front desk who answer um, the buzzer when people try to come into the school making sure everyone gets a friendly reception but we want to make sure no matter who you meet up with in the district uh, you are making people feel valued and welcome energy star usage uh, we will have this person come to us very soon Kyle did the presentation earlier this year to let you all know um, how well we are conserving our resources and doing a great job with that. And then more behavioral mental health supports for students, and we've talked about that one. And then number of the people cross-trained. Uh, as you looked out and saw the hands raised here, what you need to realize is that we have secretaries over here who also in the next 10 years plan to retire, and we want to make sure the jobs that they're doing, whether it be uh, bringing in personnel, uh, taking care of our financial records, making sure people get paid, that all of those people um, are training someone else in their absence uh, or for their retirement. How are we going to do these things? Develop a succession plan for key positions, publish key communication and uh, process protocols, uh, seek efficiencies and quality service in operational areas. And again, um, John is over these. He's already been working with transportation, child nutrition to start these. And then cross-train key positions in the district office. Uh, in, is that one on this one? Uh, improve communication. Uh, educate community on the physical constraints and needs. This is something um, I know the board, you all receive a lot of feedback uh, on how we spend money, but I think it's important for us to get the message out of what we receive from the state, where the keys money is actually being used, uh, that, that um, the lottery, for example, does not come to our school district, it goes to the colleges. Just really trying to educate the public on this. Improve communication from school to home, district wide. One of the things we've talked about is making sure we don't lose that personal connection of having teachers to make phone calls to parents to celebrate the successes. A text message is great, Remind 101 is great, but it doesn't hurt to have that personal connection. Maximize, uh, maximize central office consistency in communication, and then implement customer service training for frontline staff at the schools. And then enhancing school safety, uh, calibrate safety plans at the school level. This is something Mr. Bauer has been working on. We met with the, uh, a group this week on what we need to be looking at at the schools. Uh, Mr. Bauer over the summer had already met with 
uh, our principals so they know exactly what this group will be looking for when they start coming into our schools in January. Uh, communicate safety investments and necessity. Um, we want our parents to know why we are asking them to buzz in, uh, why we are uh, having these safety measures, and then make sure everyone in the school knows what these safety measures are as well. And then continue to build strong relationship with our community agencies. And notice the word continue. We have a great relationship with the state police, the sheriff's office, the city police of all the different ones, the fire departments, all of those um, are just uh, awesome agencies to work with here in Hardin County. And questions? Aren't you glad I did that in two parts? <laughs> so you have you will have a copy of this. I know it looks incredibly long, uh, but when you break this down, it's really about a four-page document. We just made it much uh, larger for uh, you tonight. But we will. We are already working on these items, and we'll continue to work. On them. <coughs> so, uh, this is a three-year plan. Uh, so, while we're working on it, we know we have a lot of work ahead of us to do in the next three years. So, thanks to the gentleman over there at the table, because it and. Uh, over here uh, with Mr. Wright, uh, they have done a lot of hard work uh, to make this a reality. And tomorrow I'm meeting with the uh, Home Builder Association. I think maybe you're going to be there, John. Yes, sir. Uh, they invited me and they're uh, looking at ways of getting us some state money uh, and uh, local monies for uh, more training in uh, HVAC, plumbing, electrical, and We'll try to get something going there to get some of those students that may have a different uh, <coughs> line of work that they want to do after they graduate. So uh, there's you know, always a need for workers. So we just hope that they go somewhere. I've got some friends that they work at McDonald's, they worked at uh, Chick-fil-A, and they love those jobs. and. They're perfect for them. It don't matter where you work, just do your they job just somewhere. Be paid a decent wage. That's too. right. Yeah, they are, and but they're getting there. Mm -hmm. But I appreciate it. So we don't need an executive session tonight. Yes, sir. And uh, board calendar, December the twenty third. School will be out till January third. That's till next year. Yeah. <laughs> And actually, students are out on January the 6th. We have a professional learning day, so they will actually come back on that Tuesday. Okay. And in, uh, in January, we'll be at uh, Lincoln Trail. Principal's here, and she's got plans for playgrounds and all kinds of things for me to do. So <laughs> we'll get right on that. Thank you all for coming out and staying with us tonight, and hope all of you have a Merry Christmas. Motion to adjourn. Second. Sounds like it's time. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.